this video, I'm going to be showing you my full computer science note taking system in Notion. I show you exactly how I organize my notes, what I take notes on, as well as importantly, what I don't take notes on, as well as exactly why I believe Notion is so great for note taking and studying and learning in general. This video might be a bit of a lengthier video, but I promise you it's going to be full of value. My system of how I'm learning computer science using Notion is built around the science of how to learn things effectively. I go into which methods of learning are proven by science to be effective and which are not, and specifically how I use Notion to apply these methods. This is my whole system is built around the science of learning. This is a follow up to my previous video where I outline my system for how I'm going about using Notion to learn computer science. This video might make more sense if you watch that one first. It also includes my free template on how I essentially built myself a free computer science degree using online material. And I'll be showing one of the sections of my notes and I go through it step by step explaining exactly my thought process on all the notes that I had taken from one of these sections from the Mathematics for Computer Science course. So first, let's talk about how to study. What is the most effective way to learn things efficiently? And I need to address this topic because as ridiculous as it is, this is not something that's really taught in schools. Like you don't really get to learn the most efficient methods of learning. It turns out that there is science that has shown that certain methods of learning are more efficient than others. So let's dive into the crash course of how to learn things by me. The big picture is that you want to focus on understanding. Now, especially for me, because I'm self-teaching, I don't really need to worry about memorizing things for exams or something like that. If you are studying for an actual degree, then sure, you might have to do that a little bit. But in any case, it's always better for you to focus on understanding things rather than memorizing things. Because if you're memorizing things, you're not really learning it. You might remember it for your exam, but if you actually understand it, then you'll always be able to apply that understanding, essentially use your reasoning to get all the specific that you might have to memorize otherwise. You only have limited capacity of remembering things and you always forget things after a while anyway. So you might as well focus on understanding things the best as possible. Okay, so how do we understand things the best? Okay, first we need to talk about what not to do. And a lot of these are actually very counterintuitive. But science has shown that, for example, rereading things a lot is not very efficient. And this is how I used to study a lot. I would just read something and then after a while I'd read it again and again and again because I thought that the more times I read it, the more I'll be able to to remember it and understand it, but that's not really how the brain works, unfortunately. So actually, if just focusing on rereading things, first of all, it takes a lot of time. And secondly, it's just nowhere near the most effective way to learn. Another thing is just listening to the lectures and not doing anything to actively try to understand and remember it along the way. And I'll talk about things to do that in just a moment. But none of that is really effective because it's passive. In order for your brain to actually form the connections to understanding, you need to be doing something actively, actively asking questions, actively testing yourself, and a few other things which I'm gonna talk about in a second. Second thing that doesn't work according to science is highlighting. And again, this is something that a lot of people do. You'll highlight stuff from your lecture notes, from your book. It turns out this is not a very efficient way to learn at all. And the last thing, which surprisingly doesn't work, is summarizing. Now, I need to tell you the story from my university days. There was this one maths lecture who would essentially make us notes from their lectures that they made available to us, like we could download them. They essentially, the whole lecture and the chapter was already summarized by the lecturer. So many students in the lecture would still just keep summarizing and writing down things during the lecture, even though we already had notes. And the lecturer would always just like get angry at us, essentially like, like why are you writing notes? I've essentially already given you notes. I mean, it was probably because people think that if you're writing down a summary of some materials, it's actually an effective way for you to learn, but it turns out that that's not actually the case according to science. So you might then ask yourself, okay, so if you're telling me that summarizing doesn't work, then why are you talking about a note-taking system? Isn't the purpose of notes to summarize? Well, not exactly. The, the way I take notes, it actually isn't for the purpose of summarizing. It's for something slightly different. So just keep that in mind because it's gonna become more clear as I go further in the video. So here's what you should do is then. Science has shown that there's two methods. The two methods of learning are by far more effective than any other ones. And the first of them is active recall. And the key here is the word active. You need to be actively doing things to sort of force your brains to sort of retrieve information rather than just letting it passively sit there. So it turns out that we don't actually learn things by putting things into our brains. We learn things by getting them out of our brains. It's been shown that the process of retrieving information from your brain is actually what causes your brains to form and strengthen the connections in your brain that actually make you know and learn that thing. And whenever you're trying to retrieve something, it's a clue to your brain that this must be important because you're trying to retrieve that information out of your brain. Sort of evolutionarily, our brains are evolved in such a way that if your brain's 
find themselves needing to use some information, they sort of assume that it's important. So the more you can actively try to force your brain to retrieve some information, the more you're telling it that this is important and the more it's gonna strengthen the connections in that topic or thing that you've been studying. Okay, so we've established that active recall is important. So then how do I actually apply this in Notion? Because there are actually a couple of things with Notion that make it really great for active recall. The first method in general of how to apply active recall is writing questions for yourself. So whenever you're taking notes, don't think in terms of summarizing, think in terms of questions. So for example, if you learn something from your lecture, what questions could I ask for my future self who might be reading this note because the act of then reading these questions forces your brain to retrieve that information actively rather than just passively reading it. One thing in Notion that's great for this are these toggled lists. So for example, here, this is a section of my notes from the Mathematics for Computer Sciences course. Essentially, the way I've organized my notes is I've written a toggle list for each topic in the unit. This, first of all, allows me to keep my notes clean and organized because I can keep the details just inside of these toggled lists rather than having the whole section just be bogged down by a lot of details. This is another thing that I talked about briefly on my other video. But for example, here, partial orders and equivalence, toggle list, and everything is essentially here. But the second way I use this toggle list is for these questions, which help with active recall. I'll write a question. For example, we're talking about simple graphs here. You can ask, okay, what is the difference between simple graphs and diagraphs. So I've written a question difference from diagraphs. When I'm reading this back, I'm not allowed to open this toggle before I've thought to myself and actively tried to answer this question. So I'll think to myself, okay, what is the difference between simple graphs and diagraphs? And then I'll open it and I'll see the answer, which is in diagraphs, the edges are directed, whereas in simple graphs, they're not. And so this is a practical way in which you can apply active recall using Notion. And yes, this takes more effort in the moment, but long term, this will allow you to retain a lot more information a lot more efficiently. And if you're struggling to think about questions to ask, some helper questions that you can use is, for example, why is this useful if you're learning some concept in maths or programming or whatever? And if you don't know, you can look it up. For example, here in this coloring section, I wrote down some examples on how coloring is actually used in practice. I find that this just makes it more motivating for me to actually study something when I actually know like where practically I can use it rather than just studying something theoretically. So that's one helper question that you can use. Another one is when will I use this? So if you're programming and you learn some new programming concept, think about when would I actually use it in practice and write a question like that and then write the answer inside the toggle so that when you're reading it back, you're forced to actually recall why this is important and when you would actually be using it. And the last way to use active recall using Notion is to apply the Feynman technique. This technique is derived from Feynman's studying methods when he was a student at Princeton. And the way you think about it, is, which is very usual actually, I use it all the time. Instead of writing notes from lecture notes, just passively, maybe just by copying something down, you think to yourself, how would I explain this to a sixth grader? Completely intuitively, without jargon, how would I explain this to someone who has no idea what this concept is about? That is how in the actual note taking process while you're doing them, you're forcing your brain to actively understand it because you're forcing yourself to actually explain it in your own words and to explain it simply rather than hiding behind some technical jargon. And there's this saying that I really like, which goes that until you can explain something to a sixth grader in two sentences, you don't actually understand it. And yes, sometimes I use technical jargon if I need to actually write down the actual definition, but as much as I can, I try to use non-technical words and try to explain it as simply as possible. So for example here, how I've defined simple graphs in my notes, I haven't just copied down the technical definition, but I've tried to explain this in my own words that simple graphs are graphs where the edges don't point in any particular direction, rather they just connect vertices in an undirected way. And yeah, sure, I've used the word vertex and edge, but those could be easily explained. So those, those are the point and the lines connecting the points in a graph. And as a side note, you can also see that I'm copied down a lot of pictures in here because pictures, I feel like at least for me, they make it a lot clearer, at least with something like graph theory, having a lot of pictures and a lot of visualization whenever I can, helps you make more clear for me rather than just explaining something in an abstract way. Because that can also be a very intuitive way to explain something just using a picture, especially with something like graph theory. And the Feynman thinking is actually something where I still have improvement to make myself. Often I do find myself still just copying things from the notes, but in reality, if I'm finding myself copying something rather than writing it down in my own words, I'm probably not understanding it yet. So I need to do better on that. But if I'm in doubt about whether I understand something, I close my notes and think, could I explain this thing to my mom? 
anything else. Let's know. I probably don't quite understand it yet. Okay, so we talked about how active recall rather than just passive learning is really the key to effective learning. But the second piece that really completes the picture on how to study most effectively is called spaced repetition. And if active recall is about actively retrieving information from your brain to tell it that this is important, spaced repetition is about actively reminding your brain that the information is important. So combining active recall and then doing it periodically is really the way that in which you tell your brain and then remind your brain that something is important. Because if you don't use active recall to retrieve some pieces of information for a long time, then essentially your brain is going to start assuming that, okay, this must not be important because they haven't used this information in a long time. So I might as well just delete the information from my brain. And you want to prevent this by periodically asking yourself all these questions again to make sure your brain doesn't start assuming that it's not important. During the process, I find that some of my notes weren't quite clear enough and some of the answers to the questions weren't quite clear enough. If I can't quite understand my past self, I probably haven't understood it quite as well as I should have at the time. So then I will go back to the lecture notes, I'll go back to the lecture and try to explain the stuff in better ways than I did before. Essentially in the beginning, you wanna repeat the information quite frequently, but as time goes on, the frequency in which you need to relearn the stuff goes down. I don't know exactly what the optimal time is, but there are a lot of apps like Anki where you can make flashcards that automatically applies spaced repetition for the flashcards that you make. I haven't started using this for computer science yet. Now I'm just doing it manually where I periodically go through things again, but that's again one thing that where I could still be improving my process, but I actually implementing some system on how to apply spaced repetition. Okay, so a lot of you have been asking for my full note taking process. I hope this video gives you a pretty good idea on my thought process and how I've organized my notes and what I take notes on, what I don't take notes on. As you can see, I'm really not writing down that much even because as we saw, summarizing doesn't even that work. So the only purpose of my notes is to write down all the concepts that are important. So I've written down these toggles for all the important concepts in a unit and then under them, I'm writing just enough so that when I'm going through this again, I can remind like, oh yeah, this was that thing. Oh yeah, that, this was that thing. And assuming that I properly understood it the first time, I don't really need to read all the proofs again, read all the things again. If I wanna read the full proof again, for example, I can always just go back to the textbook and read it. But I'm really not writing down everything because just copying down and writing down everything isn't always even that effective. I'm way more focused on just writing questions and using toggles as much as I can. And anytime I go through my notes before opening any toggles, I force myself to actively try to work, okay, what do I remember about this topic? Do I remember the answer to this question? Do I remember the proof of this? Like kind of. And with that, I'm like applying active recall and spaced repetition all the time that really allows me to remember things and understand things very effectively. If you go to my other video and download my Notion template, you can get this exact template on how I've organized myself a full computer science degree using Notion, using free online materials. The response to that has been amazing. So definitely go watch that video right after this if you haven't seen it already. If you have already seen it, you should go watch this video where I talk about how I learned how to code in four months and how I even got a job as a software engineer at the end of it. 